What's up, everyone? It's Nurse Blake, and welcome to episode four of the Nurse Blake podcast. We're going to be talking about when I failed my T's exam, applying to nursing school twice, and we're also going to have a fun T's quiz between me and my husband, Brett. Hi. How are you? I am so awesome and so impressed that we made it to episode four. Who would have ever thought <laughs> right. we'd stick to something for a month? That's what I'm saying. Every week. We've been doing it for a month, which is wild. That is so cool. Once a week. I am having so much fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. We change things a lot, so I'm super surprised that we've stuck to something for oh, like so your, long. Like your Starbucks order this mm -hmm. morning when you sent me to Starbucks? <laughs> so... I've been drinking a new Starbucks drink. Lately, I've been drinking strawberry acai refreshers, but I just saw they have this new brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso, and it is amazing. It's so good. Yeah, so I so I went, and you asked for a, a oat milk latte, uh -huh. and, and the girl was like, are you sure? Do you, do you want espresso? And I was like, no, no, no. He said latte. Did I get it right? No, I oh. wanted an espresso. Oh. <laughs> but I did ask for a latte, and that's not what I wanted. So I, I had to go back and get myself that. Well, now I know. Well, thank for, you. For the next week. The next week. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but oat milk is so good, so delicious. I don't like regular milk, but oat milk is like my jam. It is in right now, too. Like Starbucks especially is doing this huge push, I know, about oat milk. And we started drinking oat milk on our cereal. We did. Maybe a year ago. Probably like the start of the pandemic. It's super yeah. good because it's like it's really sweet. It's good. Well, you could get it like with sugar or without sugar, like oatly oh, don't or tell something. Me that. No, it's I... so I love, <laughs> I love it with oat sugar. Milk. What other like I also like almond milk, but I prefer oat milk. You just like regular milk? I'm, a, I'm allergic to almost everything, but oat milk works great for me. And and actually, I love regular milk. I drink a ton of it. I'll stick with oat milk. You are allergic <laughs> so to fancy. a bunch of things. You're allergic yeah. to shellfish? Yep. Legumes, so like soybean, peanuts, peas, beans, etc. cetera. Uh, corn. Mm -hmm. And tree nuts. That's, um, it's too much. It's too much. I've mostly outgrown them, though. I used to get horrendous, re like really serious reactions where I would end up in the hospital. Yeah. And uh, now that's just shellfish for me, which is a lot easier to avoid than like soy and corn, which is in, in everything, everything in America. Yeah. But you can't have coffee. I can't have coffee. Nope. Can't do coffee You're either. missing out. It's yeah. delicious. I wish I got Starbucks my energy drinks. would sponsor this podcast. They really they, should. They should. They yeah, really well, should. Yeah, you talk about them enough. And they should give discounts on these drinks for healthcare heroes. Thank you. They okay. only typically give like the 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 drip, not even the drip, just the regular coffee like for free. Oh, do, oh, do they have a discount for nurses? It's free. You get a like really? a regular coffee, oh, but that's nice. Who orders just a yeah. regular coffee from Starbucks? Yeah, they know like, nobody orders. Right, we want caramel macchiato. Yeah. So we want this new brown sugar oat milk shake and espresso. If someone gave me their Starbucks order and they just said, "I'll just take it black," I'd be we're like, "I'm winner. just, I'm not even going to Starbucks." No, anymore. we're just going to go to Seven Eleven. Exactly. Like if that's what you want. Yeah, <laughs> I love coffee. I'm obsessed with coffee. It's so good. You are. I have started coffee like ever since like. Forever. Nursing school, I lived off caramel macchiatos. Like, that was my thing. Like, grande caramel macchiatos. And then I kind of got away from milk. And then so I switched. I switched to strawberry acai. But this oat milk is And like now you're on a new thing. I delicious. Love it. it looks really good. And it's brown sugar. They said for the first time ever, they run out of brown sugar. Because everyone's ordering these drinks. Oh. And I just posted on my Instagram and everyone says it's like I their never favorite would have even Starbucks of drink. Brown sugar in a drink. Mm. That well, someone really did good, at though. Starbucks. What really was so good. cool is when we lived in Seattle, that's where Starbucks is headquartered. And on like the what do they call it? The pier? Mm hmm What do they call it? The pier. It's like the Seattle Which part? What what are you trying to talk about? Where the Starbucks is. Oh, oh, in the port. Do you talking about their headquarters? No, no, no. They're the original Starbucks store. Oh, the OG at uh, Pike Place Market. Pike Place Market. Yes. That's what it is. It's like the original Starbucks store. The line is forever long, but it is so cool to go in there. They like toss the cups around when you order a drink. Like it's a whole experience. Yeah, it's totally different than a normal Starbucks. Yeah. And then they have the really fancy roasters or roasteries. Oh, fun. Those are where they serve liquor and like food. 
Yeah, they yeah they serve like everything, and they have. I mean, there's like conveyor belts going around. Like they're really, it looks like Disney made it. Yeah, like, they're really really cool. And I think there are some of those in other cities too. But there's like three or four in Seattle. It's like a and Starbucks roastery or something. Really awesome. If you get the chance, definitely go check one out. If I would do my life over again, I would definitely work at Starbucks. That's the one thing I regret <laughs> is not working at Starbucks. So my first job I actually got when I was 15, I worked at a UPS store, like a local pack and ship store. So no, I didn't have to wear the short brown shorts, but I worked there for like three years. I thought almost five years. It was a while. Right? It was you a were... long time. Yeah, you started when you were like 15. I did. Yeah. And they just gave me a job and I was just working part time in packing and shipping, baby. Bubble wrap. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. I, I definitely learned a lot um, just about, you know, customer service and stuff and whatever, but it was a fun job. My first job was, except for like the little cleaning company I had when I was six, you know, pick up sticks and was like 50 cents and rake the leaves was a dollar. I called it Cleanup Incorporated. I had B and C Enterprises. You were a whole enterprise? I was a whole enterprise in my neighborhood and it was Blake and Colby. Colby was my neighbor, but he never worked. So then it just, I went through a business name change and it was just <laughs> B Enterprises. I picked weeds. I walked dogs. Uh, I painted mailboxes. That was a big summer for me. Wow. I was painting mailboxes around the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I know. love it. Well, my my first like job, if I had to pick one, would be um growing up, my my mom and I didn't have a didn't have a lot of money, but I, I wanted to play tennis. Like that's okay. all I wanted to do growing up. And so I was able to play tennis at all of these private clubs because I would like sweep the courts do the lines. I would, you know, work in the pro shop. I would do whatever I had to just so I could be there and play. And then, you know, I'd just play with the other members and I could have guests come over and stuff. And that was really cool. I even taught uh, kids camps. Like when I started getting into like 13, 14, 15, I'd be teaching clinics and stuff and even adult clinics and whatnot, cool. which was a lot of fun. And finally, I got to the point where they would actually pay me a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, it was like, you know, we each had a little there. hustle. We had a little side hustle going hustler. on. Straight up hustler. I was trying to make money because my parents weren't paying for me to go to the movies or nothing. Oh, no. I know. You didn't have an allowance? No, I had to work. <laughs> I had to work to make money. Yeah, I did. Because I definitely, I was like a clothes person. Like growing up, I would love to have like go shopping at the mall and like have my own money. So when my mom would drop me off at the mall, I could spend my money. I could picture that. I could yeah. see you as a little mall rat. Totally. That's so fun. For sure. Oh yeah. The malls, not anymore. Who goes to a mall anymore? Just shop online. Um, yeah. So I had that job for many years. Like you said, I can't remember, you know, how many, and then I got into working in healthcare. I've actually always been interested in healthcare. My mom has worked in medical device sales and my dad has been a respiratory therapist here in Orlando on night shift for the past 30 years. So I feel like I was just meant to be in healthcare. So I never considered anything else. I actually started high school in the health academy. Cool. So they prep you, you know, um, for healthcare jobs and you take specific classes to healthcare, like science classes and stuff. Did you get to carry over any credits like into your you AA or anything? got to, but I, I was actually in dual enrollment too. So when I was in high school, I was taking my college classes. Smart. But, I wish I had done that. But I was not smart in high school. I mean, my GPA was like 2.7. Oh, you were smart in college two, though. I got smart in college. Oh, okay. Yes, I was much better in college. But in high school, like they have this thing called Bright Futures here in Florida. Like if you make a 3.0 or above, they like pay for two years of college it's or something. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. Yeah. And uh, my parents really wanted me to get that. And I really wanted <laughs> to get it, but I didn't because I had like a 2.8. A 2.8? Yeah. Wow. Which well, but you were taking more advanced courses? No. No. no, no. Okay. Well, not me. I was I'm not trying, in baby. any of the advanced honors or any of those advanced academic courses. And I remember in like 12th grade, I did a, a local play. So I even missed like half of my school days because I was getting paid to do a show like uh, here in Orlando at Lock Haven Park. Um, I forgot what the theater's called, but I did Holes, the Disney yeah, show Holes. Yeah. And it was like a work program. So if you were working and were getting on the job experience, you could cut your senior classes. So, so you kind of got credit for it too. Yeah. A little bit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, 
I completely wasted it because I graduated with like a 3.8 with honors. And this Dang. is back before the, you could get more than a 4.0. Oh, yes. And, and, and an right. A, by the way, was a 94 to 100, not a okay. 90 to 100. Like, right. a lot has changed. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't even go to college. What a waste. But you're so smart. You're <laughs> one of the top 10 smartest people I know. Thank you. For sure. <laughs> no, no. You're, you are cool. really smart. You are self-taught, which I absolutely love. Like, if you want to learn something, you figure it out, and you do the research, and you do it. Yeah, I actually had a... a like a full ride scholarship to a really nice business school here in the state. And I ended up not taking it because when I was a senior in high school, uh, I started building websites for government agencies, um, mostly for like uh, county courthouses. So I was putting public records online stuff. And so I ended up, I, I had like my own business and didn't have time to go to college. So I ended up turning away the scholarship, but, um, and then never went back. You had a little office, that. right? Too. Oh Vero. yeah. I had a couple. Yeah. In, in Vero beach, I was still living there at the time. And that just took me that, that job really ended up taking me like all over the world. It was really That's cool. That's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. No college. Nope, no college. For nursing, you obviously, that's one of those yes. professions you definitely need to take classes. Yeah. But um, after my job at the UPS store, I wanted to start working in the hospital setting because I knew like right after I graduated high school, I was doing my prereqs for nursing. So I got a job as a patient transporter, um, which is so fun. If you don't know what a patient transporter is, you are the person that when a patient needs to go from their room to ER or the x-ray or CT scan, or maybe they're being discharged, the transporter comes up and gets to transport them, whether it's in a wheelchair or in their bed. So I got to go around the whole hospital, one of the large systems here in Orlando. And it was so fun. I mean, I was like 17, 18, um, exploring the hospital. You still talk about that job as by far your favorite, but that's kind of a that takes a really big health. I mean, like a lot of healthcare facilities don't have that role. Right. Is that right? Yeah, some don't, especially at the the smaller facilities don't have, you know, patient transporters. But it is such a great thing to have. I know as a nurse, it's like having a patient transporter is such a huge help. And I think working in that role, I have a lot of respect for patient transporters because it's a hard job. So typically we carry around a beeper and it says patient room. 328 needs to go to x-ray and then we get timed. So we have to call in and say we picked up the patient and then call when we get to x-ray Okay, and then page and we're going, because we get like six minutes to get there. You know, we have times, yeah. metrics that we have to meet. And what's so funny is as a patient transporter, you either arrive to the patient's room too early or too late. The nurse is never quite ready or they've been waiting for you forever. So there's always this like just fun tension between like transport and uh, the nurses. That's that's awesome. Yeah. So well and and that was a big facility too, like a thousand bed hospital. Huge. huge I mean, facility. I was fit. That was that was my workout. In. Definitely got my steps in. Um and it was just fun, just interacting with the patients and I really got to explore every area of the hospital, which I was so happy to, to be able to experience because I kind of knew like what kind of nursing I wanted to be at. Just being comfortable talking to the nurses and the doctors and having fun um, was a huge help in my transition from nursing student to nurse. Yeah, that's really cool too, because you got to see all the different units. You know, I know we talked to a lot of nurses who have been in the same type of practice for a long time and they don't necessarily know well, unless they're floated right. all the time, <laughs> right. uh, you know, what some of the other units do, but that's a neat way, especially if you're, if you're new or interested in becoming a nurse or getting into healthcare, that was a great exposure for you to be able to see so many different types of, of units within the healthcare system. Yeah. And just talking with patients. That's one thing you don't really learn in nursing school is the art of communication and connecting with patients. And as a patient transporter, you know, you're not having those heavy, difficult conversations that other providers providers have to have. You're there to provide, you know, just a unique transportation experience <laughs> for the patient. But my job, you know, I love to make them laugh, make them feel good, ask them about their life and their day, why they were in the hospital. Um, so it was really cool to be able to connect with patients and their families on that level. And I think I have definitely taken that experience into my practice as a nurse. That's really cool. So if you're looking to get into nursing school and you want some healthcare experience, I highly, highly recommend either volunteering or working in a hospital, whether that's full-time, part-time, or PRN. 
It'll help you stand out when you apply to nursing school, and it will just help your transition so much. That's cool. What type of volunteer positions might be available to somebody that, yeah. that would be good experience for a them. lot of times just like checking people in you know you're working on the at the front desk you know directing patients you know where they need to go um and there's just a lot of you if you are into music and they have music therapy and you play you know the guitar a lot of hospitals will have you come and do music therapy oh, for cool. patients or in the lobby wow. um so definitely a lot of opportunities and once you become a volunteer or you're working there in different roles you get a badge you're in the hospital system so when it's time for you to graduate you're right. like i work here i've been volunteering I work here, here for a year but i left transport because they weren't paying me enough. Let me tell you what happened. They, <laughs> I uh, got this job and I was making like $8 an hour, if that. And on my letter, it said like I was getting paid $8 an hour. Well, after I was working there for a few months, they were like, oh, that was an accident. We've been paying you too much. So we're going back down on your pay. Oh, no, they didn't. And I left the UPS store for this. Like I left my UPS store for this job. I thought I was getting paid this much. So... Being the person I am, I just, I totally didn't go up on the ranks to complain. I remember coming to work one day um, with Einstein bagels, and I went all the way up to the executive VP oh office, my gosh. knocking on the door of the. Um, I went right past the secretary to the VP of Human Resources and talked myself into her helping me get a, a different job. That is so Blake. Like you, you have no fear. When it comes to like, oh no, I got a problem and we are going to solve it. We are going to solve it. And so she ended up helping me get another job, which is cool because I really, really like being a patient transporter. It was really awesome. But this opportunity um, led me to experience something else. I got a job in surgery. Yep. Which is so cool because if you work in surgery, you get to wear surgical caps. You don't even have to do your hair in the morning and it saves so much time. That's convenient. And my job was to clean up and prep and sterilize all the rooms. That's nasty. Before and after <laughs> procedures, especially like the ortho procedures or the spinal procedures, they are really, um, it's a lot to, to have to So they to just clean leave up. it oh. as is. As and, is and that was your job to, to go, go in, in and with the mop bucket and everything to clean up, take out wow. the garbage, clean everything. What about things that they like? I mean, not to get graphic, but like you know, leftovers from a surgery, like things that are Th those used are to all be part of the person. handle different. Okay, like, so that wasn't that yeah. wasn't part of your no, deal. not my role. Well, that's good. Yeah, whatever else that was left, you know. Uh, it, so. I was a surgical assistant, not a surgery tech. So surgery techs are the people that pass like the instruments. They scrub in, they're with the doctor cool. or the surgeon. <laughs> no, I was a <laughs> surgery assistant. So I was cleaning up all the rooms. We had like walkie talkies and I guess I wasn't cleaning fast enough. So I would get in trouble for not turning around. It's pressure. Like if you don't turn around a room fast enough, you, you got the patient waiting, you got oh, the yeah. surgeon waiting, like and that's it could get backed up dollars open in that space for sure up. so when i was in lighting there was a lot of push for new technologies for cleaning and sterilizing or rooms okay. um, they have foggers that will like automatically fog an entire room wow. with like hydrogen peroxide and then suck it back out why do we have this they have <laughs> robots now uv robots that go oh, around and sterilize and clean those. rooms yeah um ozone systems there are even light fixtures now you know um there's all of the the light fixtures up in the ceiling yeah they have them now where they have certain wavelengths of light that will turn on to help sterilize a space wow Really, really cool. I spent a lot of time working on sterilizing OR rooms. Well, we didn't have that. So you were oh. looking at the sterilization. <laughs> it Blake was with me. A mop. Me with a mop. Uh, and what was on? You could turn on music and stuff. And actually, a lot of surgeons and teams actually have music playing in surgeries. So, so mm -hmm. knowing I was getting into nursing, they would let me watch a lot of the surgeries. I got to see the robotic surgeries, cool. which are so fun. So you have the patient, you know, in the center of the OR room with these like robot arms da vinci or whatever it's called yep and then you have the surgeon on like the other side of the room and they look like they're playing a video game so it is so wild to witness but the technology is so cool is anyone near the patient or they can't be because no they're got these... by the patient they yep. are yep. okay mm -hmm. wow that's incredible um, but the surgeon's like on the other side of the room and they put their fingers it's like all managed by their fingers and they're looking into like 
the microscope lens. It's it's that really cool so to cool. see. I remember they made me transport one of these Da Vinci machines. They're like nine million dollars from like the first floor to the second floor, which does uh, cardiac surgeries. And I was like, "Are you sure you want me to transport this thing? Like, if it gets damaged, like, is that coming out of my paycheck or like how's that work? Does that get deducted? Not for eight dollars an hour. I think they thought because I was a awesome transporter that. They would let me transport it. But um, it was oh. fun because I got to see the pediatric surgeries. I got to see the robotic surgeries, the neurosurgeries. I got to see when Life Gift would come in and do like organ procurement and um, transplant operations. I also got to see open heart cardiac procedures wow. and learn so much. Um, so so that was really cool. I'm, I'm glad they um, ended up lowering my pay in transport so I could get that <laughs> experience in, in the OR, but super cool. So were you... Uh, within just one part of the hospital or like you went to all the different ORs? Did you get the opportunity to see like different types of OR settings or were you kind of all in one spot? Great question. Um, I was in the main OR, but typically when you have like heart or, you know, cardiac procedures, those patients need to be so close to the ICU, like in a hallway over next to the cardiac ICU, CV ICU. So that was on the second floor. And the OR rooms there, the ICU rooms are here because um, the the patients, you know, really need that extra care. And just transporting a patient uh, can be dangerous. Sure. Um, so it's super important that especially they... with you pushing the. <laughs> oh my gosh, those <laughs> beds are hard. Let I me tell heavy. you. Did you have the ones that like? Are, we had are both, but they're not automated. always working. They're so expensive yeah. and it's crazy to drive those because once you like, you put your hands on the handlebars and once you press, they go, like they have push <laughs> and it's always so nerve wracking. Like the first time you're doing it or getting into an elevator, impossible. Or if a patient has multiple, like the uh, IVs going on in an IV pole and if there's not an IV stand, you're pushing the bed, transporting this IV pole next oh, to you. No. Like it is a mess to watch. Wow. That's a lot. I had that good transportation experience to definitely help me. Very cool. And then from there, I actually um, was applying to get into nursing school. But um, one of the things you have to do to get into nursing school is to take the nursing entrance exam, which was the T's exam for me. So T's, T-E-A-S. What's that stand for? Academic testing, academic skills exam test examination of <laughs> academic skills maybe yeah so that's a tease exam tease exam yeah it's science reading writing math yeah. um so super like basic stuff and oh my gosh so we didn't have any like healthcare specific it was more of like a entrance exam to make sure you've got the fundamentals yeah nothing too specific to nursing or healthcare except some of the science a portions could be from like AMP okay. or something, anatomy and physiology, which is a prereq course. Yep. Things like that could come up. Cool. But I'm not a good test taker, however, <laughs> or a good student. In high school, like I said, I was not a good student. But as I was doing my prereqs for nursing in college, I had a much better GPA. I, like, I was pulling like a 3.5. Wow, okay, I look know. At you. Thank you. Thank you. It was 3.5. Um, and that's because one of the prereq classes um, on every exam, you got to bring in a note card. For an exam, oh, I would convenient. write so small. You can write crazy small. I had the smallest handwriting. Yeah, that I was a never lot. my. Yeah, that was never my forte. There Dude. were there were kids I remember in high school that that was like that was their, their thing. thing, and why they did so well is because they could write crazy small. I could have sold those. Yeah, I could have made a lot of money. Um, so yeah, so I had to take the T's exam, and I was so nervous, but I, I thought I had it in the bag, but I didn't. I failed my T's exam. So typically when on a T's, like the minimum score needed is like a 78. And I was like 68. Like 78% or is it one of those weird 78% scaling? or higher okay. for the T's exam, I think is how it is. But okay. I know the minimum score had to be 78 and I was like 68, 69. Um, so I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Cause you can't automatically retake it. There's like a waiting period. Oh, it was sucks. like up to a month and you could only take it so, so many times in a year. So right. it's like so much pressure. And, um, during that time, knowing I hadn't taken or passed my T's exam, I still applied to nursing school thinking I was going to get a good score right. and I didn't get in, in that semester. So I was, oh, so that worked out. 
Well, <laughs> I was hoping I would pass and get in. And so <laughs> not only did I fail my T's exam, I uh, got rejected from my first nursing school. Now, did you study for the T's the first time? Yes. Was that like really hard? Like that, like you yes. really? Because you don't know what to expect. Right. This is like a, like you don't take anything like this since the ACTs or SATs, which was, you know, a few years ago, two years ago for me. And I just didn't know. I thought I was going to do good. And yeah. you, you, you're so excited to start nursing school and you line everything up, like when applications need to be due, when you could start. So you get really excited and it totally Confident. just like burst in my bubble. Aww. I know. So when I was looking for a nursing program and some things you should definitely consider are definitely how much nursing schools are because some are affordable state colleges and they some are very really expensive. Widely. Yeah, Just widely. the textbooks alone expensive. Yeah. Uh, but the most important thing to ask any pre-nursing students out there are what are the NCLEX pass rates? So uh, the NCLEX is the exam you take opposite to the T. So after you graduate nursing school, and that will get you your RN license, your nursing license, or LVN license. Um, so you want to make sure the school has a high passing rate. So 98%, 99%, 100%. But you also want to ask what the retention rate is. Because if they start with 100 students and they have a 100% pass rate, but only 15 graduate, right. you know, so those are the <laughs> biggest questions you definitely need to ask when choosing a nursing school. But I chose the Seminole State College. It was Seminole Community College when I started and the UCF, University of Central Florida concurrent program. And a lot of people know I went to Seminole State College because of my ugly nursing school uniform. Because it's oh, is that where that was? so I... ugly and so unique to that school. We really um, stood out in clinicals. Can you explain the concurrent program? Because uh, you know we yeah. were together during that time, and yeah. I, even I never really Confused. fully understood what was what and what that meant. Yeah. So the um, the concurrent program, the state college, the community college I was going to, helped me get my ADN, my associate's degree in nursing. Okay. And the university helped me get my bachelor's in nursing. So the state college and the university had a partnership. So since we didn't have to travel to UCF because the commute was longer, they had some UCF professors teach our BSN classes after our ADN classes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, so I was getting my BSN at the same time as my ADN which was cool. Uh, it kept the cost really low because I was getting a majority of my classes at the Community State College, nice. which was great. Connected with UCF, a big university, um, which was a great experience for me. I graduated with my ADN six months sooner. So I graduated with that in May 2014, and I had to take one or two more classes to fully complete my BSN, um, which I did in December of 2014. I remember that now. You took? Did you take a few classes at UCF? Uh, no. On the main campus? It was all no. at Seminole State? It was all at Seminole oh, very State. cool. Yeah, okay. so it was cool. So That's we didn't have nice... to commute. Because parking at that big campus, oh, there are oh, so many students that go to UCF. It. And I was living, during my prereqs, I was living just at home with my parents. I didn't get to go away or find myself. I wasn't, I, I wish I did. Um, and then I obviously lived with you yeah. uh, after I got into nursing school. But I had to retake my T's because I failed it. I bombed my T's exam. So I waited the 30 days and retook it thinking I was going to really pass it this time, like with flying colors because I was studying so much, drinking all the caramel macchiatos, <laughs> staying up really late. But I got a 78, oh. which was the minimum score. Wow. That's a tough test. Uh, oh. For me, yeah. I don't know about oh. other people, but it was hard for me. Yeah. No, it sounds like it. I mean, because you were putting a lot of effort into it. So. And I invested, like like I said, in high school, I was in the healthcare academy. Right. You know, I w was doing my prereqs right, right away, getting experience in healthcare. And I was oh. like, what happens if I don't get in, you know, if they don't accept me? Luckily, Whew. they accept. Don't make me go knock on that dean's door. <laughs> I'll, I'll go up. I'll go up there. Will. I'll go there. Um, <laughs> and, and I got in. I was so lucky. I was so happy. I remember, like, freaking out. But... There's so many instances like throughout our life, especially in nursing school and in nursing, where you 
reach these obstacles or boundaries and you really just have to push through and really believe in yourself, especially if nursing is what you want to do, um, keep fighting for it. And at the end of the day, it's all about timing as well. So, you know, that break in between the semester because I didn't get in the right semester I, I had applied to first. Uh, it was all about, you know, not giving up and it allowed me to get more experience, you know, working in the hospital setting. I actually became a PCT, a patient care tech in the neuro ICU at the level one trauma center here, um, which was on the night shift. So it was my first night shift job that I did while I was in nursing school. Yep. And that was a lot of fun. I worked part-time in that role. So it was two days a week, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., but a lot of more patient care experience because as a patient care tech, you're on a unit and you get I think I had like 15 patients. Oh, wow. So I was helping, you know, turn the patient, clean the patient, um, talk to them, make them comfortable, do blood sugar checks. Um, so a little more hands-on than being a patient transporter or, you know, working in surgery as a surgical assistant. You really, like going back and thinking about it, you really set yourself up for success as a nurse because of all these different roles that you did. I think that's really cool. Yeah, no, it was, it definitely helped me in my nursing practice. So if you're out there and you need experience and hands-on before you get into nursing school, definitely do it. Yeah, there's so many different things that you can do. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. there's so many different roles and not only just at hospitals, but there's also a lot of community clinics, outpatient clinics where you could also get that experience. And there. even volunteering, like you said earlier. For sure. A great no, it, it will definitely help make your resume stand out, especially when you only pass the T's with a 78. <laughs> was that good? Oh, no, that was pretty good. I'm going to try out for the voice so I can meet Ariana Grande. We got mm -hmm. this fancy microphone. All of a sudden mm -hmm. you're a singer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but we are going to test each other for the T's test. Do you want to shout out um, yes. anything first? Let's do it. Okay. NurseCon. So if you're right. interested in joining an amazing, incredible nursing organization of nurses and nursing students around the world, you could definitely join uh, and become a NurseCon member at nursecon.com. We have monthly memberships available, annual memberships available, also 11 a time lifetime memberships available. You could get all your CNEs. We have wellness classes and discounts and an amazing community. Yep. And then we also have my merch. So if you're a NurseCon member, you get 20% off Nurse Blake merch. Yep. And you got some awesome merch uh, that just dropped. In fact, most of it's sold, sold out. out. We got a lot on back order, but we're getting new stuff on, in, I think, this week. I'm getting new stuff in on Wednesday. Oh, awesome. So there will be some new merch items. Cool. And if you ordered a hoodie that was on back order, they will be here Wednesday. They'll we'll be, be packing them up and going out. Uh, and then big announcement. Oh, yeah. Coming up. This is huge. NurseCon at Sea. We secured our dates for 2022. We have the whole ship going out of Miami. Yep. If you want to get on the wait list, text wait list to 31996. Yep. Wait list to 31996. We've got uh, the Freedom of the Seas, which was just had like a $120 million renovation in 2020. So this thing is like brand new. And we're going to be able to have up to 4,500 nurses. It's actually already 83% filled, but we're going to be opening up registration very, very soon. We're going to make announcements. So text wait list to 31996, and we will keep you updated. I'm so excited. I can't wait for a vacation. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be the ultimate nursing So conference. NurseCon at Sea is all about providing the most incredible experience for a nursing conference. Yep. I mean, it is all about... The nurses. So we've got amazing educators on board. We've got some awesome entertainment. We have uh, for 2022, we're going to Royal Caribbean's new private island, Perfect Day at Coco Which K, is amazing. We got to go. It's stunning. So, so cool. gorgeous. We're going to have a nurse talent show. Oh, yeah. Scrub fashion Just show. Stop. That's okay. too, much. Right. too much. Too much. Too much. So if you want to get on the wait list, text wait list to 31996 and we will keep you up to date. Tickets will go on sale soon. Very soon. Stay tuned. Yeah, next week or two. Yeah, I'm so excited. I can't Me wait. Too. Ready? Okay. Get your questions out. All right. I hope I can pronounce some of these words. We'll go back and forth. So yes. you ask me a question and then I'll ask you a question. All right. So these, these are, are for T's, test prep. Don't know if they're accurate. Just pull them online. Close enough. All right. Let's test your knowledge here. Trypsinogen, an enzyme secreted by the pancreas, is activated into trypsin in the duodenum by which enzyme? And I'm going to read you the four options. Pepsin, 
hydrochloric acid, protease, or enter, enterokinase? Enterokinase. Enterokinase? Yes. It's D. Yes. Well done. Ding, ding, ding. ding. We need, ding, a, ding, ding, we ding, need ding. a bell or a buzzer. My turn. Okay. Oh, gosh. Which of the following controls the flow of chime <laughs> from the stomach into the small intestine? A, pyloric sphincter. B, esophageal sphincter. C, ileocecal valve. Or D, the epiglottal flap. The epiglottal flap, D. Oh, so close. Oh. You meant to say A, the pyloric sphincter. Oh, is that A? That's what yes, you meant that's to what say. I meant. A. Sorry, you don't get to see it a. here. Okay. Your turn. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, which structure is not considered a part of the rib cage? The thoracic vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae, mm -hmm. the sternum, or the costal cartilage? The lumbar um, vertebrae B. Did you look at these? No. Wow, I'm impressed. You're two for two. <laughs> and you failed your T's? Yeah, failed. You're at 100% failed. so far. Number two. Okay. Phalanges are bones present in which parts of the body? A, cranium and skull. B, fingers and toes. C, ears. Or D, fingers only. Oh, I believe they're... Only in the fingers. Oh, so close. Fingers and toes. Oh, B. I knew it had something to do with the fingers. You were close. That was close. That was close. Was you close. get half a point. Do I get half? You get All half right. a point. So I'm, I'm at 25% so far. Yeah. If I get half. For oh, that. your turn. Oh, yeah. You okay. got to keep, keep this on. This you is, gotta, we have this five is questions rapid each. Fire. Okay. Which vitamin is mainly synthesized within the human body? Mm. Vitamins D, C, E, or A? Say it again. Which vitamin is mainly synthesized within the human body? Vitamins D, C, E, or A? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I vote a friend? <laughs> can I vote? <laughs> can I... Uh, please answer in the form of a question. It's D. Vitamin. Is it answer D or vitamin? So this is confusing because answer A is vitamin D and answer D is vitamin A. Or say D. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, well, so if you mean vitamin D, then you'd be uh -huh. correct. Yeah, oh, yes. The answer Vita is A. I meant vitamin D. The answer is A, a vitamin, vitamin D. D. I, okay, this is almost as bad as select all that apply. Oh, my God. Those when are the worst a is vitamin questions. D and answer D is vitamin A. Those are the worst Good questions. Good baby. I'm so Three. impressed. Which of the following describes a role of hydrochloric acid in the digestive system? A, it converts trypsinogen to trypsin. B, it neutralizes bacteria ingested with food. That's again, B, it neutralizes bacteria ingested with food. You might want to know that one. C, it neutralizes the pH of stomach contents. Or D, it protects the walls of the stomach from digestive activities. Definitely B. Shut up. You're so smart. Thank you. You could almost Thank pass you. and Thank get a 78 <laughs> <laughs> on the T's exam. Yeah, I'm getting close. All right, cool. Um, all right, on each side of the body, the mm, mm -hmm. brachiocephalic veins are formed by the union mm -hmm. of which two veins? A, inter internal jugular veins and subclavian veins. Mm -hmm. B, external jugular and internal jugular veins. C, external jugular veins and subclavian veins. D, common cardioid and subclavian veins. Um, <laughs> when in doubt, say A. <laughs> yes, it's A. Oh, okay. <laughs> when in doubt, say A. Good Three job. Thing. A. Gosh, it's getting hot in here. Mm. It is getting hot in here. Ooh, Four. Good. <laughs> <laughs> a ball is tied to a rope, and a boy is moving it into a circle around him with constant speed. Which of these statements about the ball is true? The ball is round. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> a, force is acting away from the center of the circle. There is no acceleration, B. C, the force is acting toward the center of the circle. Or D, force is acting at a tangent to the circle. And spinning a ball. Yeah, he's spinning a ball around. I would say that the force is going away. So A. Mm, C, toward the center of the circle. The force like, is going towards the center? Yep. 
Really? Mm -hmm. The centrifugal force that's going away. Yeah, but this is what oh, online this said. What this says. is what it said online. I, yes. So that's where we got these from. And of course. You definitely. So it's, I'm sure it's right. So not even me. on so nursing exams, <laughs> even on nursing exams, if there's something you do like in nursing in real life, that doesn't mean it's going to be the right answer on right. the nursing exam. Right. Right? Does yeah, that, make, no, that sense? makes sense? Got it. That makes sense. So how am I doing so far? Great. Thank you. Passing. My turn. Okay. Your turn. Oh, my Babe. Turn. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'd be a horrible professor. All right. Uh, which of these is not a lymphoid organ? Did I say that right? Lymphoid organ? Mm. The thymus, the liver, the tonsils, or the spleen? Uh, uh, the liver. Yes. Cool. Well, B liver. Yes. Well done. Not a lymph lymphoid organ. Who would have thunk? Love it. Your last question. Okay. Number five. Which of these is not a part of the CNS? What's that mean? The CNS? Yeah. Central nervous system. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Obviously. I was just saying that for the audience. Which is not a part of the central nervous system. Okay. A, cranial nerves. B, brain. C, spinal cord. Or D, tract. Bundle of nerve fibers, axons. That was, what, read D again? Tract. Bundle of nerve fibers, axons. Oops. I'm going to say the brain. So close, babe. But it's A, cranial nerves. Oh. In I, the brain? Cranial nerves, A. Okay. We are close going enough. to do a... Um, <laughs> I better study. We're going to, as your professor, I'm going to give you a curve on this exam. Yes. And you're going to get passing. A 78-point <laughs> so curve. So that's all you need. So is everybody, <laughs> everybody passes. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll so take fun. It. Oh, for those of you taking the T's exam. Good luck. Good luck. Definitely study, study, study. Pick a program that does T's prep. Stick with it. Believe in yourself. You got this. You got this. You got so this. When in